Okay, for the next step, we're gonna start our whip stitch, and that means we're gonna sew um, the back onto this. So remember, this is called a running stitch, kind of looks like dashes, and the whip stitch looks a little bit different. We're gonna whip it around the edge, but first we need an edge. So we're gonna cut out our circle by pinning together. We're gonna use four pins. We put one at the top, one at the bottom, one on each side. This is the same technique we used when we were cutting out our features. And you can see some of them I did pointing in, some of them I did to the side. It doesn't really matter. The only thing you don't want is pointing out toward you. And then I'm just gonna cut it out. Now, if you already cut your yellow circle, you're gonna pin it to one and just use that yellow circle as your template. Okay, now, I have this ready to go and I'm going to start my whip stitch. Now, the way this will work, because eventually we're gonna put stuff inside to fill up like a, like a pillow, right? Or soft sculpture. So we're gonna leave a part open. So I'm just gonna leave this, these two sections between these two pins. I'm not gonna sew it yet. So I'm gonna sew around the edge with my whip stitch all the way around. Now, just like before, when we wanted our knot on the back. This time, we're gonna put it on the inside. So I'm gonna kinda open this up, and I'm gonna put my first stitch inside. Okay, so think of it like a little sandwich. My knot is inside the sandwich, okay? Now the whip stitch works like this. You're gonna go around the edge, around the edge, around the edge. So I'm coming around the edge, and I'm just gonna go one over, and I'm actually gonna do it a little closer to the edge, okay? One over, one spot, kind of like with the running stitch, we're gonna go through the top, and then back to the back. Skip a little space here. Through the top, back to the back, to the other side. Okay, so you can see it kind of comes around, 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 kind of like a spiral. And I'm just gonna do this all the way around to here to leave a space for me to put my stuffing in and then we'll do another whip stitch to finish it up. Now just a heads up, you don't want these too far apart or your stuffing is gonna fall out. This is pretty good. I wouldn't do much more than that, okay? So make sure that you're gonna be careful not to make big wide gaps or you're gonna have a hole in your pillow or your soft sculpture. Now, just like with what other parts, once I pass a pen, if I don't need it anymore, I can just take it out, keep going. Now, like before too, two pieces of this sort of thick felt can be kind of difficult. You can do like we did with the extra felt here. When you get almost through to the eye of the needle, you can hold it starting on one side and just push it through. Now I can see my um, marker lines here. You should just have pencil, not marker. But if this bothers you, you can trim it in before you start sewing, just so you know. The um, thread will cover it up a little. It's not gonna be that noticeable, but I know some of you are gonna want it just right, and I respect that. All right. Now before, I said I wanted to leave from needle to needle, but I probably, honestly, am not gonna need that much space. So I'm gonna make sure that I can stick kind of my four fingers in here. Oh, I can take this out. Four fingers in here. So I'm gonna just go up until I feel like my thread needs to be tied off because it's getting kind of short here, but it's not too short yet. So I'm just gonna go up a little bit further, but make sure I have enough space to add the stuffing. Okay, to tie the knot, I zoomed in a little here because you're gonna need to pull your fabric 
apart a little bit. See how you can see that little thread in there? I'm gonna sew into that. And this is gonna be where I make my little knot. So just like we did before, but this time it's inside of our little sandwich here. I'm gonna tie, oop. Show you again. So I just went under this thread and now I'm gonna go inside the loop to make a knot. Do that a couple of times. It's a little awkward. And one more time. Okay, and then just like when we were making knots before, just leave a little tail, but not a really long tail. Okay? All right, now that kind of goes under, and I can think about putting my stuffing inside. Like a little sandwich pocket. Okay, so now I have my pocket, I have my stuffing, and I'm just gonna stuff it inside, just like it sounds. Now this kind of edge, whenever you're sewing like this, this is called a raw edge. Normally you would kind of like tuck it under if it's a different kind of fabric, but felt's pretty easy, it's not gonna unravel. So we're just gonna leave it like that. Just make sure that we seal off our edge. And then I put my stuffing in here. You can make it really stuffed or you can make it less stuff, but you just need to be able to close it up in the end, okay? Okay, so you can see it's like a little cloud inside of there. And I'm gonna use my hand and I make sure that it's gotten to all the edges. Now you'll see, see how it's kind of in some areas kind of popping. If you want, if you want to be really careful about that, you can just make sure your stitches are really close together. Or I'm going to show you one other kind of stitch. I'm just going to use it on this side, but that's just to show some of you that might be interested. This is called a whip stitch with a back stitch. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I already have my thread ready. And I'm going to start with my knot inside. Okay. You can see the other knot. All right. I'm gonna pinch it. Now we could, pinching is hard, use our tools, give ourselves a little pen here. Uh -huh. Much easier, look at us. Okay, now for a back stitch, we're gonna do same thing, come through. Side, pull on the other side, something happened here. Aha, there we go. Now it's nice and tight. That's not part of the back stitch, that was just a mistake. Okay, with the stitch we did around the rest of it, we would just go in the back, out the front, in the back, out the front. This time, before we go in the back, we're gonna put our, oops, put our needle under the stitch in front of it. And then we're gonna go in the front, or in the back. Okay, in the back, out the front, but I'm gonna put my needle under this loop. It's almost kinda like, kinda like tying a knot, but not quite, okay? So now it goes through, or under, that stitch and it's gonna pull it to the top. This is another way to make a tighter stitch. So in the front, and through the loop. My needle keeps getting uneven. Comb it, okay. Now, I'm just gonna keep going. 
Now one way to do this is just to make it so that when your stitch comes through, it comes back through the knot, see? So it's catching at the top. So I'm just going back through, through the loop so it's going to get caught right there. Okay, so you can do it that way or you can just in the front, out the back. Now it's not going through the loop, so I have to go back and capture the loop. Now it's going to go through the loop. Okay, so you don't have to do back stitch. I'm going to show one more time. It's a little bit of an advanced move if you want to try that. To finish this up, I'm just going to use the regular back stitch just to review. So in the front, out the back. Whip it around, in the front, out the back. Something I want to show you on this last step here. This final knot. See how I tied it before I got to the other knot? It left a little bit of a hole. So what you, what I recommend so that doesn't happen is actually going a little bit past. And see how you have this little hole here? You can even go through the exact same hole. Out the back. And that's actually a better spot. So it's like you go in the final hole that you started at the very beginning. Now I'm just going to tie inside my little sandwich here. It's very tricky because it's all closed up. Three little knots. One, two, three. And then cut a little tail, tiny tail. And now I have a soft sculpture that I made myself. Dun, da, da, da. Now you can use a Sharpie. Sharpie works well on this to write your name on the back. Actually, it's probably better before you put the stuff in there. But I'm just going to write Miss S. The end.